Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name is Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. How's everybody doing today? I shall do my usual bit of waffling until I can see some people coming in. I see we've got some viewers checking us out now. Good morning. I'll just wait for the chat to kick in so that I know you can hear me um, and that everything is all good to go. I shall get a message from Stuart, hopefully. Stuart's in the room with you. If you have any questions, then he's there to help. I don't think I'm alone today. I could be. Tuesday after bank holiday. Maybe, maybe not. I can see the bit. There we go. Mo's first. Good morning, Mo. Lovely to see your name pop up again. Always the first. So, and here comes everybody else. Jill, Ken. There we go. Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> Hopefully no crackling today. No, we changed one of the leads last week and Jim assures me that um, that should solve the problem. So touch wood, fingers crossed and all that. There we go. Everybody's coming in now. Welcome. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Um, hope everybody had a, a lovely bank holiday weekend. Should we go through our usual what's the weather like where we are today? I'll start us off. It's grey and overcast, but it's quite sort of mild and muggy. A um, bit mixed over the weekend. It was lovely on Saturday afternoon and I think Sunday afternoon and yesterday morning-ish, I think. I can't remember now. Um, but it's definitely, it's dull and grey and um, cloudy, overcast, that's the word I was looking for. Um, but it is quite, I'm quite warm in here actually. Um, but I won't be taking my jumper off this week. <laughs> I'll just uh, roll up the sleeves and get groovy. So, so how have we got? We've got dull and grey in Crawley, same in West Berkshire, cloudy in Ripon, North Yorkshire, um, overcast in Knock. Knock, knocking them, Nottingham. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be um, that it's overcast everywhere. So Lorraine can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Can Stuart? Sounds is good, says Stuart. So I'm guessing other people can hear me. Um, yeah, dull in Somerset. Lorraine, I know it's obvious if you've got your volume switched up. If you, is it on mute on the screen? Sometimes on you're watching via YouTube. Sometimes you have to click the little button just to unmute. Um, yeah, don't know. Everybody else seems to be able to hear me. So um, we shall see. So it's just 10 o'clock. I'm always early to the party. So I'd like to get settled and just chill out five minutes or so before we go live and um yeah everything everyone okay people can hear me that's good or not good it was quite interesting um i was watching um the one show on bbc last night and um kirsty young was talking about the the bbc coverage of the upcoming coronation and she was explaining how Back in the day, I think during the coronation of the Queen, I think that she said, this is just a rough number. They had 12 cameras covering the whole of the coronation. And um, and people, if they could afford back then, were going out to buy TV to actually watch it on TV. And, um, and this time, I think she said there was like nearly 200 cameras um, for the coronation coming up but the different ways of watching it. And most of them is on the BBC iPlayer. So um, if you go onto the BBC iPlayer, apparently you can watch it and it will be signed. You can watch it uh, within, um, what's the, the words coming up, um, if you're hard of hearing. Um, and she said, and then if you wanted it without any commentary, you can turn off the commentary <laughs> as well. So uh, isn't it amazing how, I mean, obviously, back in the day, the coronation, what was it, 1953, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, how 
things have changed. You had to either watch it on TV, if you had one, um, or you had to be there. And now you've got all these different ways of being able to watch it. So you can watch it, obviously, the iPlayer for your TV, online, on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad, on your tablet, um, making it more accessible and the various different ways of, of watching it as well. And I think that's what's great about when we do the Shack and Groovy Tuesday is that it doesn't matter where in the world you are, what time of the day, night, morning, evening it is. Um, you can put the subtitles on, you can turn the volume off, you can turn it up, you can turn it down, but you can also go back and watch it again and again and again. And um, I, I think it's great because we often have lots of people viewing in, viewing in, tuning in live during Tuesdays and on the shack on Mondays, but some people are at work or they've got chores to do or other tasks appointments and you can go back and watch it whenever you want or if you think what did he say about this bit or how did he do that you can go back and fast forward slow it down and and everything else um what's that from bernie bernie's father bought a tv to watch and all the neighbors came in i know it's crazy isn't it to think wow yeah 1953 um I think the generations now just automatically think that everyone had TVs. Um, yeah. So, um, technology, that's all I'm going to say. Because <laughs> I can't think what else I was going to say afterwards. So, I think we're, we're nice and calm now. Um, joining in a couple of minutes late, but I've been out in the garden. Super do tiny screen too i bet it was yeah I, i've seen pictures or uh, like tiny little tv now you get tvs that fill the whole wall or you can project onto a wall can't you so but yeah so what are we going to do today in groovy tuesday so we're on week four of using the lovely jane nesterenko rose and lattice so these are the plates we've been looking at and I love the different elements to it and if you're looking I'm not going to say it's a quick and easy card but if you're looking this frame here has so many different uses and for me often when you're working um, with your parchment or your designs if you've got a nice frame it can really make a difference. Now, whether that be the lace frames from Josie, the duet plates that we looked at previously, or something very simple but elegant, okay? It can really enhance what we do in as our centerpiece. And then obviously we have this one here, which is the A5 square lattice. I'm sure Stuart could pop the links up to, to these on the website. Um, but you have the versatility of the design. So you can take any shape frame and infill. So if you've got any of the nested shapes from the square, the circle, the oval, the rectangle, the octagon, you can infill to create a really nice decorative frame. Okay. But what I thought would be a good idea is we'd keep it nice and simple and just trace it out exactly how it comes and then decide what we want to pop in the middle whether we put the rose that comes with the plate or another design so and again the sentiment can be at the top so you can change the look of it but also when I look at this this way if you just introduce two lines there it's like a snow globe as well isn't it so it's not just for flowers all we've created is a frame to put a piece of artwork in the center. And with the coronation coming up, I thought that the king and queen would be, or queen to be, would be perfect in the middle, or the little toy soldier, or the gnome soldier. Um, so, um, so yeah, I just think it, it's, it's a really nice frame 
that is so universal and for me is sort of like a um an essential whether you go for the one the a5 one that has the rose in it or you just go for the a5 square i see stuart's popped the link up thank you stuart and last week we had a look at i just took some of our nested circle dies and cut out some circles and i just took the dahlia um one of jane's um other designs to pop in the middle so it's whether you do it on a separate piece or whether you do it directly onto your design and last week i think we also spoke about creating little toppers whether it be circular or square because they'd make fantastic little coasters. I mean, obviously this circle one would go in there, but you would just do a square and you could have a series of lovely little coasters with the dahlia. I mean, say for example, you just wanted to keep it floral and you wanted to go with just the, the Jane Nestorenko collection because I know many, many of you will have that collection already. So you've got the Agapanthus. See that? So look, that looks lovely in there. The dahlia we've already looked at. What about the fuchsia? The fuchsia sits really nice in there. See, it, so it creates like a, a spotlight on the design. Um, then you've got Jane's original rose here. So you can move it around and decide what element. The coast is a, a great little gift. And it's also another way of um, protecting your artwork as well. So you could do a card and a coaster. Imagine if you're, um, if you're, you make stuff to sell. These little coasters, just do it on colored parchment, the rainbow parchment, or the designer parchment. These would be great. Then if you go for the floral accessories, for example, so you've got the Agapanthus name. See, so look, that's lovely on the inside. Or you could just go butterfly love this butterfly or if you go for the dahlia nameplate you've got single stemmed dahlias and a little butterfly but you've also got these lovely ornate frames as well or borders then the one that um, works with the fuchsia is the hummingbird see the hummingbird looks lovely and we've got another butterfly and then finally, we've got the rose nameplate, which just gives single stem roses. So you could do it at an angle. Another lovely butterfly in there. So for me, if you're looking for a quick and easy gift, then um, the coasters are fantastic for that. Or you could go for the bookmarks as well. Okay. So I'm going to go with the design that comes in the plate. For those of you um, that have invested in this plate, let's keep it really nice and simple and just go with the design that's in the middle. But at home, it's entirely up to you which design you wanna pop in there, okay? So we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna reposition, I think. Now I need to attach this to something so it doesn't move. So this is where the calligraphy plate mate comes into play. So it houses our A5 groovy plates. Okay. So let's pop that out of the way. So we need our design plate. We need our piece of artwork that we've already been working on. Got to get this groovy tab off first. So we need that. We definitely need some groovy tabs. I've got them everywhere. Loads of groovy tabs. We need our groovy guard. And we're going to go with our number one, two, three, and four groovy tools that comes in the starter kit. Okay. I can see we've got the lovely Jane in the room. Um, so if you have any questions, um, Jane's very good at art. Have we got any other of our lovely design team members in the room? I had my head down so I couldn't see who else popped in. Normally we have Glynis, we have Josie, we often have Carol Baker in the room. Um, 
give me a shout out. Let me know that somebody's there. I know Jane's there because she's just, um, somebody's got a special birthday this year. There we go. Josie's there. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So Josie's in the room. Jane's in the room. Is it Mr. Kilminster's special birthday very soon? 21, Ken? 21? I'm sure that must be a special year. So Hazel's in the room as well. There we go. And we've got lots of our lovely design team members in there. Now, Hazel will be doing the groovy make and take at um, our open days in Ditton. So that would be great. So who's coming to Ditton? Hands up. Who's coming to Ditton? It is on Friday the 9th of June or Saturday and or Saturday the 10th of June. Tickets are just eight pounds. Um, I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up to those, for those interested. Um, of course, Paul, plus quite a few more. All right, 25, 26, 30. <laughs> Lovely Jane Telford's coming. Mo's gonna be in Mexico, Mexico. Oh, very nice. Um, in the backs coming on Saturday looking forward to you know what the open days are so so special um it's just like a big family get together it really really is um and it's great as I said last week to see these little names popping up on the side some you just sort of recognize the names instantly but it'll be nice to put faces to names um Everyone, when they come in, you get a sticker. You can write your name on it if you choose to. It's entirely up to you. Maybe you're shy and you, you don't want people to know who you are. <laughs> That's totally fine. Um, if you're coming on your own, you won't be on your own for long. I can assure you of that. So, okay. I think we're, we're good to get going, I think. A little bit quieter today after the bank holiday, I think, in the room. So, um, but I reckon it's just coming up to quarter past or it is quarter past. My clock's a little bit slow on the wall. I have to change the batteries. Okay, right, so let's have a look on the, the overhead. So we're gonna reposition our piece of artwork, line it back up, and you'll find that it slots back into position. Okay, just like so. And do you remember when we started, I, I've said that when I'm working with a piece of parchment, especially if I'm using my plate mate, I tend to, so it lines up on the edge of the plate as well, of the plate mate, because that also helps for positioning. Okay, let's just, all right, that's gonna go on there. I'm gonna put another groovy tab down here. Now at this point, it's not that important if it doesn't line up perfectly, because I've found with mine, because I embossed those little dots, it doesn't go into the grooves as much, but I can still, I haven't got a shadow, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to put another groovy tab just there. Definitely been to, let's go number four for luck. And we're going to position that just like so. Okay, so let's move over a little bit. Now, what I want to do, remember um, we spoke about the piece that was created in the craft along, which was, let me just flick back on my notes, the craft along that was done on the 17th of September, um, 2021. I, I automatically want to say 1921, but it wasn't 1921, it was 2021. Um, and this was a piece that was created in the Craft Along um, by Barbara Grace and Linda Williams. So it took the, the frame, but it had the rose coming in from the frame. Okay. But if I hold this up, I want you to have a look at the lily of the, the valley. I wonder if I come in on this one. I don't know if I've come in. Yeah, that might be better. I haven't used this camera for a while. So when you have a look, let me, there we go. You, you can't really see the outline of the lily of the valley 
and also on some of the areas of the rows. Okay. And it gives it more of a, a natural look to the design. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the areas first in which I want to add white work to. And those areas are going to be predominantly the lily of the valley. So I'm just going to zoom in so we can really we'll just stretch up. And we'll zoom right in. And then I'll move the plate. Okay, hopefully it's not too close. So if I now move that down a little bit, there we go. So what I often find is easier if you do the areas first where you want to do your white work, and then you don't get carried away with the number one tool in order to get that crisp white line. Okay, so we're good to go. Who's going with the design from this plate? And who's going from a, a different design? Okay, another slurp of coffee. All right, okay. So I am going to use the number three tool, okay? And we've had a look previously, the difference of the uh, brightness of the line art by using the different size ball tools. So there we go, Margaret's using this one, excellent. Anybody else? Okay, so I'm gonna put my glasses on, bear with. That's better. And what we're going to do, I'm going to take the number three tool and I'm just going to very gently do the lily of the valley. Okay, now if I, let me just remove this groovy tab. See, so this is where the downside, I tell you what. There we go. You can see it's very faint. Okay. So, back in position and I'm going to do Number three tool, nice and slowly, the outline of the lily of the valley. And instantly, my voice slows down. And because we're using a larger ball tool, it falls out of the groove more easily as well. Okay, but that's not a problem because it's not going to mark where there's no grooves. And if it happens to go in these areas, that doesn't matter either, because we're going to go over those um, with the number one tool to give them a nice, crisp, sharp line. Okay. So, find where all the lily of the valley is, just like so. Okay. So this is great. The, the groovy guard, it gives me that focus on the area. Another little one there. And just nice and gently, nice and slowly. And off we go. So I'm not doing the, the stalks, it's literally just the heads of the lily of the valley. So then we're going to move down. Going to move, bring the plate up. I know we've got some more down here. And don't worry about the little highlight, low light dots in the middle. We're just going to go with that. That's fine if you want to go with the number one tool. Perfectly fine. Um, it's not a problem at all. So if, I think we've got we've got any more lily in the valley. Because what we'll do, we'll do a comparison. Right, okay. Let me, let me go back and let's just finish these ones off down here. Okay, so I've got all of my lily of the valley done. They remind me of those little, that um, arcade game, Pac-Man, the little monsters. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now, we're going to compare these two, okay. There won't be any difference, it will just be a little, it will take a little bit longer to sort of break down the brighter white line, okay. So if I take my number one tool and go in, 
the number one tool. So what we're doing, we're just covering both bases. For, for those of you that are going with the number one, the number two, the number three. Okay. Because I know for many of you, this will be the first time of doing any white work. So it's, this is a great way of sort of learning because we have those softer area, where well, it's a smaller area to work on. So now if I lift that up, you can definitely see the difference between using the number three and the number one. Okay. Now we often talk about um, the groovy bus journey, um, the, the concept that Barb came up with. And the first step is to create the, the lovely line art, which gives you a beautiful result every single time. And if that's as far as you want to go on that bus journey, that's perfectly fine, okay? But I know from experience that when you get that lovely line art, you want to be able to learn, not want to be able to, you want to learn a little bit more, whether it be the coloring or whether it be um, the white work, you can go down whichever, you can sort of like detour on the bus. So you're going along the bus, you've done your white work. Now you may want to turn left to white work city or right for color city. It's entirely up to you. And you, what you'll find is that if you, you're going along that bus journey, you go right for color, and then you think, oh, I want to do some white work now. Then you come back up and you meet the white work coming back at you. Does that make sense? Or am I just... <laughs> Sometimes I really um, surprise myself at the, um, the waffle that I come out with. Now let me show you something else as well. Let me just lift this off and I'm going to go to my scrap piece, the one where we've practiced with the, the different pieces. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you something else. Okay, let's just wipe this with the tumble dry sheet. So I'm going to do these ones here. I know I digress slightly, but I just want to show you something. So number one, and then I'm going to go to my number three over here and do these ones. Who's new to white work? Has anybody not tried to do, tried white work yet? Are you on that part of the bus journey where you're just getting used to tracing out the line art. Come on, hands up. Okay, so you can see there, we've, we've definitely got the difference between the number one and the number two, uh, number three. Okay, now, I'm gonna get into trouble for it, but I'm not gonna get into trouble. Who's gonna get, who's gonna tell me off? Nobody's gonna tell me off, are they? Really? <laughs> There's no parchment police in the room, so I reckon I'm safe. And Linda Williams has done it before, so if Linda Williams can do it, so can we. Okay. Pergolina B1 pencil, the wax based pencil. Okay. White work. So I'm gonna just color on the back. I'm not going on heavy, I'm just going on gently with the B pencil. Okay, I'm gonna do the same on here. A little bit harder to see. But still doable. Glasses are definitely helping. Okay, should we turn it around? I mean, they don't look like anything really, do they? So if I turn it over. So you see where we've gone with the, the number three tool? There's no 
bright white line around the outside. But where we've gone here, there's definitely um, a line. We can definitely see a line, can't we? So if you're going to use a white pencil to colour in, it will be harder to break that down. And you probably have to go on, let's go on really heavy. So if I go on really heavy with the pencil, I'm not going to do any blending. I'm just going straight on with the white pencil. Okay. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. I'm, I mean, to be honest with you, I'd be happy with that. Um, what's Jane saying? If you do it, one layer of white works so it feels embossed, then colour it white, it looks better. If you do one layer of white... Ah, right, okay. I know what Jane's saying. So what Jane is saying... If I, let's go back and do... Do another one. So what Jane is saying, if I trace out with the number one tool, I know exactly what Jane's saying. Okay, so the number one tool, like so. And then if I go to my soft side of my mat, and I'm going to go with the number four ball tool, and all we're going to do is just gently put sort of like a, an undercoat down. So if I put an undercoat down on those two, okay, just like so. Now I need to make sure I go back to um, the hard mat because I don't want to color on the soft mat because I will definitely go through the parchment. And then go on the back of the white pencil. So let's do these ones so we can have a look at the comparisons. I mean, I can already see the difference in the, the brightness of the white. Um, so let's turn it over now. Yeah, that definitely makes a difference. Good idea, Jane, top tip. So you can see there, they've both been traced out with the number one tool, but now um, the white line isn't as prominent as it is on this one with just a pencil behind it. So that's a really good idea. If you're unsure about your white work, just put an undercoat down first and then go over with the white. And if I feel, I, it's, so it is actually raised, whereas that is completely flat, okay? Jane says she doesn't do all her white work like that, honest. You know what, Jane? Even if you did, I probably wouldn't tell, be able to tell the difference. Um, as I say, there's no parchment police in here. Um, and who am I to judge? If it gives the result you're after, then why not? Okay. All right, so let's go back to our rose. Pop that back into our plate, mate. So I'm happy with um, the lily of the valley. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my number one tool and I'm going to trace out the stems. Okay. Nice and easy. So we're doing the stems first on the lily of the valley, just like so. So let's do all those first. There we go. Still ignoring the flower heads. See, it's, this is what's great is that. Many of us in the room, are, well, I'd say most of us in the room, are doing parchment craft in one form or another. And by being in the room, we can share our ideas. Um, 
on how we achieve different results to get the same type of effect. And also we've got Groovy Worldwide, we've got Clarity Worldwide, and there's a, a, a whole fountain of knowledge there. If you're ever unsure, as I, I've always said it, no question is ever a silly question if you don't know the answer. Well, there is the odd question, but there you go. Okay. So I've done all the stems of my lily of the valley. So let's lift that up now so we can see the difference. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm ignoring, I want to ignore the main rows itself at this point. So I'm going to continue with the number one tool. So let's start off with the, the ribbon, like so. So the rest of my work, oh, I'm going to ignore the main rows and also the leaves. Okay, everything else, just to keep it nice and simple, um, I'm going to do with the number one tool. That's the plan anyway. So what was my plan? What did I say at the beginning about what we do first? We do the areas we want to go on first with the number two or three. Okay, so for the rows, let's do the rows. I've just swapped over to the number two, and I'm going to trace out the rows with the number two tool. Okay. So that otherwise I'm going to forget and get carried away. Slowly does it. See, I tell you to do these things, and then I do the complete opposite. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so everything. Let's do everything with the number two tool. So we've gone from the number three tool down to the number two tool. Okay. Now, again, it's entirely up to you. If you don't want to do any white work or you don't feel confident with your white work then just do everything in the number one tool you'll still have a beautiful result when you've finished okay i'm not here to judge who am i to judge anyway i'm just enjoying the moment and the design. And every time I work with um, Jane's designs, I remember Jane. Lovely lady. Okay, so I've got my rose. So now I'm gonna do the leaves. Okay. So I'm gonna do the outer part of the leaves with the number two, just like so. Mm. Easy, does it? Just follow the design, just like so. And what we're going to do for the center of the leaves, what do I reckon? Let's have a look. Let's go with the number two tool on the veins as well. Keep it nice and simple. Don't overcomplicate. Okay, that carries on around there. So that's the rest of that leaf. And then we'll. If you find that the tool um, is um, is jumping out too much, then just go nice and slowly. 
has no arrays. Right, okay. So I've got all my leaves, so I've got my main rows all done with the number two. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the number one and I'm going to finish off the rest of the design with the number one saw. And you know what? If I do get carried away and I go on to an area that I've done with the number two or the number three, it's not the end of the world. Okay. That was me just covering myself <laughs> if I get carried away. Because I know I do. I really do. So, we're going to carry that on just there. And then we're going to do the rosebuds. Just like so. Apologies if you're asking if I've got my head down and so I can't see any questions popping up, but I'm sure if there's that, I'm sure the lovely design team and Stuart are there to answer your questions. Whilst we do this, then I'm going to come over to this rosebud. that one out the number one just like so and the last part now don't get carried away and think oh that doesn't look as if you've traced it out um because it's fainter so just be aware of that um because it's very easy to get distracted and go over those areas. Okay, should we have a look? If I lift that up now, yeah, we can definitely see the difference, can't we? So we've got the beautiful crisp white lines. Let's turn it over. Should we turn it over and have a look? Okay. So on the front, <laughs> yeah, we can definitely see that. So we've got number one completely on this area here. Um, so that we can see the difference between the white work. Over here, we've got the lily of the valley with the number three and then the stems in the number one. The rose and all of the leaves have been done with the number two. And then the rest of it has been done with the number one. Okay. So we can definitely see the difference in the brightness of the line art. Now, as I say, if you want to do everything in the number one tool, that's perfectly fine, okay? I'm not saying it's got to look exactly like this. These are just my suggestions. Um, you've got to do what you feel more comfortable with, at what part of that groovy bus journey you're on. If you're thinking, don't want to do any white work, at all, then you don't have to. Just trace everything out with the number one tool and it will look lovely. Oh, ooh, coffee's gone cold. That was quick, <laughs> considering it's quite warm in here. Um, okay. So who's crafting along and who's just watching? <laughs> Excuse me, tickle. I know many of you just watch and then have a go afterwards. It's the same in the shack when we're watching Barb and um, she's doing the lovely doodling and it's, it's sort of, you're absorbing it and sort of taking it all in um, and then you go off and have a play. Some people can multitask and do it at the same time. Again, there's no rules. It's whatever. If you just want that distraction, you're just looking for some company um, for an hour or so each week, whether it be Groovy Tuesday or The Shack, then that's entirely up to you. Um, we're just here to keep you company and hopefully show you something new as well. I mean, that idea from Jane, I remember it, but in when you're in the moment, do you know what I mean? It's, 
so to have the the lovely sort of suggestions not just from the design team if you've got an idea that works for you then by all means share it um because you may come up with an idea that you think oh why don't we think that it's so obvious um yeah it's all about sharing and i think that's really what crafting is all about it's all about sharing whether we get together virtually or physically we can often pick up different hints and tips and tricks and and everything else i mean when i watch tina when she's on tv doing um pergamano shows or get groovy with tina there's always something i'll pick up from it whether the areas that she's tracing out the different techniques that she's using um the different ways of enhancing your coloring there's always something i'll pick up and it's the same when watching barb as well and um and you, think, you know what sometimes the obvious isn't obvious until you see it um we often have conversations of a morning and sort of oh, what about this what about that and then barb will show me something and i go well how did you do that and then she tells me or she shows me I go, oh yeah but sometimes many of us need to have that to be shown something that looks so beautiful but is easy to achieve and just by watching someone or someone explaining it does make it achievable and you'll go there and think i mean just like what jane said a little bit of undercoat a little bit of white work and then use the white pencil so if you're worried about doing various different layers of white work because you you haven't got to that stage yet just do that just either coloring with a white pencil or just put that very soft undercoat down and then enhance it with a white pencil do you know what i mean it, it's little things like that that you think you know what and then because you've got the confidence with that that first level and then you've used the pencil to enhance it you think you know what i want to try another level and you will and then before you know it your white work will be immaculate and beautiful and no pencil will be required at all so um so yeah it's gosh that got really deep <laughs> right let's have a look where we are i digress but i think it just shows i think how passionate i am about what we do here not only in the shack on the groovy tuesday um and parchment craft as a whole and um how we make it achievable to get beautiful results easily so i've got this piece of artwork here let me just bring this in this is a piece of artwork from carol baker and carol has just traced everything out with the number one tool and then just added some color in so it won't look much different to what we're doing or what i'm doing here it's just that it will be i'm going to incorporate some white work and then some color okay and then we've got another i'm sure we've got another piece here we go this one here let me have a look. this is from sheila so we've got the beautiful whiteness of the lily of the valley and then the lovely color of the orange on the rose that's the only place there's any white work and then I've got another piece here by Guinness. let's compare these two okay so we've got Sheila's piece here where the only piece of white work is within the lily of the valley we've got this piece here from Glynis and Glynis has done a little bit because I can feel it just in those little um, rose lips of the curls of where it's come over and then a little bit of white work in various places but it's not a solid white so we're going to do a combination of both of these I'm going to have the full white of the lily of the valley and then I'm going to have some white work on these areas and also on some of the, the leaves as well. 
So what I'm trying to say <laughs> in a long-winded roundabout way is that both of these are beautiful pieces of artwork that you can achieve. It doesn't matter whether you've just got on the bus or whether you've been on the bus for months and years and years and years. Okay. And what I'm going to try and do is combine the various different parts of that bus journey in my finished piece. Okay. All these bank holidays. So I'm going to go to my soft mat now. I'm going to take off my parchment from my plate mate. Carefully remove the groovy tabs. Pop that to one side. So what else do we got coming up this week at Groovy Headquarters? Okay, let's have a look at my... Right, before we do that, I'm going to do some white work. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some white work in the Lily of the Valley whilst I'm talking. And to do that, I'm going to go with the number four ball tool from the starter kit. Glasses back on. Okay. And then all we're going to do is just gently, I'm starting at the top and just stroking down to the line. Very, very gently. Okay, so what have we got coming up? So today's Tuesday, and it's been Groovy Tuesday. Um, tomorrow, Barb and Dave are off somewhere very, very special. They're off to Buckingham Palace Garden Party. Um, so that's tomorrow. And no doubt on Thursday, I don't know whether cameras or phones are allowed or don't know. So we'll have to wait until um, Thursday to see if Barb was able to um, take any pictures. Uh, so that's tomorrow. Um, then on Sunday, we have Barb's on TV. It's the first Sunday of the month. Um, so Barb's on TV. And it's all about colouring. And the lovely Jazz has designed some fantastic colour me stamps and groovy plates. And then there is some new um, printed options available as well. So if you're not into your stamping or not into your, to your groovy, then, um, then there's some fantastic designs coming up. And we've got the pop-it postcards on the show. We've got the feathered friends that many of you have purchased and coloured in during the shack with Barb. So there'll be lots of tips and techniques to learn on there. So that's on um, Sunday. We've obviously got Barb's blog every day. And then the Clarity Matters blog on Saturday and Sunday from the lovely Grace. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a very gentle layer of whiteness on these folds, on these curls of the rose. Okay, and I'm starting at the bottom and I'm just going to the middle. I'm not going all the way across. And then I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to come in this way here. And then I'm going to do the same here, like so. So I'm not going, I say I'm not going all the way. I'm just starting at the base or the, the bottom, so to speak. And then adding just sort of a little bit of whiteness. We've got that one, we've got that one. And just along here as well. Okay. And then I'm gonna come in 
from the opposite direction but i don't want to i don't want it to meet um in the middle i want that openness okay so just like so I'm sort of shading so that it takes the shape of those curls or the areas that have been folded over from the petal. And when I turn this over, it's going to look absolute rubbish. I can tell you that now because I've only just started on it. Okay. Ready for the rubbishness? There we go. It just doesn't do anything at this point because it is that gradual process of letting it rest and building it up. Okay. So. Okay. So we're going to turn over... Right, let's add some little bit of whiteness to um, the leaves. Not too much. I just want to get sort of like a, a feathered effect. So I'm starting from here. And I'm just going in a little way. Just to add a little bit of whiteness. To the edge. See? I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me for a moment. <coughs> oh, bless me. Oh, normally I sneeze louder than that. But it would have blown your heads off. <laughs> so I had to stifle that one. Okay, let's do a little bit of. Okay. It's like feathering. We've done this many a time um, with colouring, um, with Barb in the, in the shack. So, oh, which, what, what day do I go now? What day do I go? What way am I going? So gently, gently, gently. It's just... And what it's going to do, when we then put the colour behind it, it's going to add that little bit of sort of light and shade. Okay. So I'm just going to carry on. And you know what, I reckon this will take us, we'll finish at this point, because I, I definitely want to leave this to rest until next week. Okay, so we can really see a difference because it, there will definitely be a difference next week when we come to put the next coat down. Gently, gently, just a little bit. We're not doing the, the whole leaf. We just want a little bit of undercoat, undercoat around the edges okay there we go but it looks rubbish and it will do so don't panic if yours looks like that or it doesn't look like that and you just think oh what have i done it's all about building it up in the layers whether we're doing it with the white work whether we're doing it with color um it's not finished until it's finished. That's the whole purpose of it. We can have it finished by just tracing out and jobs done. That's perfectly fine. Um, but we're just incorporating a few little techniques to take us a little bit further on the bus journey. Now, if you don't want to do the white work, you can stop at the point where we did all the tracing out and you can wait until we start to do some color which I reckon, if I remember, <laughs> will be next week. 
let's write this down on my notes for next week. Uh, so next week, color. So for the color, we're going to be using a pergolina pencils um, with Dorso oil and our spot on sponges. Okay. So that's what we'll need for next week. But we can still do some more white work. We're just going to build it up slowly and slowly and slowly. Ooh, where has that hour gone? How do these hours go so quickly? I did actually stick to the plan today and do what I wanted to do, but I didn't say that at the beginning because whenever I say it, it never happens. So um, thank you for your company again, as always. Um, Stuart for helping out the lovely design team members in the room, as always. Thank you so, so much for everything. Um, I will see you, um, where are we now? So. Obviously, we'll be back next Tuesday after the next bank holiday, the Coronation Bank holiday. Don't forget, Barb's on TV on Sunday, 3 till 5. I'll be up at the studio with her. And um, so I hope you can join us for that. Two fantastic hours um, to look forward to with some new designs from Jazz and also some new designs from Mel Turner. That's all I'm going to say at this point. I'm sure Barb will give a, a sneaky beak. Beak? A sneaky peek later in the week. That was a bit of a tongue twister. So, um, yes, I will see you all next week. Take care now. Enjoy the weather, whatever it brings. Um, enjoy the coronation if you're going to be tuning in. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.